Hey guys, it's Matt. I'm with Chandler with Modern Mill, and they've got a really cool product. This is made out of rice holes, and you know I'm a big fan of taking one product, making it to another, especially, I believe this is waste product, isn't it? It is, yes. Our so tell waste. us, so how did you guys come up with this concept? Do you just have like a bunch of rice sitting around? It's like, we got to do something <laughs> about it. It's been sitting there too long, or you're yeah. making trim out of it? We are making, yeah, we're making trim in a, in a variety of products out of it. So yeah, if you, um, going back, uh, going back in time, uh, our founders actually worked with uh, some chemists and were able to develop a new compound. So we actually do create a new compound on the chemical level where we actually take rice hulls, grind them up to a specific size, wow. blend them with PVC resin. So the other component of this is PVC resin. And with that, we have this next generation of composite PVC building material. So with the PVC in there, like obviously this is for interior and exterior. Yeah. And PVC I mean, resin gives that durability on the outside. Absolutely, right? So we... If the, the elevator pitch or the, the simple positioning statement of this material is it's the evolution of the next generation of PVC building material. Uh, so all the features and benefits of PVC, but by incorporating the rice hulls, we add the warmth and workability of wood. So now we're minimizing the static dust. Screws don't spin out as easy. Uh, it doesn't melt when you're cutting it. It's a little bit stiffer board. And most importantly, if you uh, take a look at a piece, if I have a piece here, you can actually stain it. Right? Oh, wow. So this is a water-based... Uh, vinyl safe formulation of stain because of the PVC resin, but you can wipe on, brush, spray, or roll on stain, semi-transparent, solid stain, semi-solid stains. It's a so, real differentiator there. So, I mean, what is, what is the ratio to PVC to the rice holes in this? Is it 50-50 or? Right, right about there, yeah. It's 50% okay. rice holes and the other 50% is uh, PVC resin and some other stabilizers and, and uh, ingredients. So by adding, I mean, obviously the benefits of being able to stain it in its exterior grade is very important. Uh, one of the one of the the, the, the challenges with 100% PVC has is thermal expansion when the sun hits it. So by adding the rice holes to this, is that like reduce the amount of thermal expansion with this? Or I mean, it's close, right? So yeah, yeah. technically, if, like uh, from a mathematical perspective, yes, it's still within the same realm of traditional PVC. Okay. And especially now that when people start staining it and using darker colors, that affects that. Um, so we do generally tell people if you look on our website and look at our installation guidelines. We have very similar installation guidelines to PVC, where we're asking for robust fasteners, Got it. vinyl safe coatings, and then considering the climate when you are installing it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it, well, I mean, the thing is, you don't want to have those super tight joints, because usually like over 18 feet or 16 feet, is like, it expands like an eighth of an inch. It doesn't sound like a lot unless you're doing that butt joint, so it sounds like you just need to like leave a little bit of space for that movement, especially on the outside if the sun's hitting it moving it around. This is for yeah. any material. I mean, this is yeah. even for fiber cement. This is not Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we just, the, we actually have a disclaimer and like a sticker that we put on boards that says, hey, stop. This stuff looks like wood, but it's not. And everything moves, right? Wood moves from moisture. Absolutely. Uh, metal moves. Everything moves. So we move from temperature. So we just work with people and through our guidelines and through our Got territory right. managers in the field telling people, there are things we can do. We do make a rabbited trim board, so you can actually pocket the siding in the rabbited trim and hide the expansion contraction. Or if you're going to stack your fascia boards, there's creative ways to do it. And it just gets down to using the right fasteners, the right finishers, and then just building with a product that behaves a little bit differently than wood. I'm a little bit upset right now. It's because I just installed another product. I didn't know <laughs> that your product was stain grade. Yeah, man. So the fact that it's stain grade, I'm like, man, this has been perfect application yeah. for what we're trying to do. Again, the other product works, but I do like yeah. this product a lot better. So. You know, with with this, um, the the challenge we have. I'm in the southeast. Yep. Um, got a lot of moisture. You mentioned that obviously it just laughs at moisture because it's not going going to be a weekend because of the PVC. Right. Um, what about bugs? So I'm sure bugs? you get yeah. Yeah, I mean this is uh, so if you think about the rice hull yep. as a natural fiber, what differentiates us from other organic fibers like wood dust is that the rice hull's purpose in nature is to protect the rice grain from water, weather, pests, mold, and mildew, right, and sun. So from a natural fiber perspective, this is actually one of the best fibers out there for exterior building materials because it offers that same protection. Then when you pair that with the benefits of the PVC, that's it's a, sort of a miracle uh, fiber for that application. I mean, it's already resilient, now it's super resilient. Yeah, exactly. That. That's pretty cool. Um, I see you got the different pre-cut. I mean, I'm, I'm assuming this doesn't just come in like a square stock. You've also got the, the beadboard. You've got the tongue and groove as well. So do you, do you guys make it like this? You guys mill it like this? And, and we can just basically install it like this in the field? Yeah, great question. So in our manufacturing process, I talked about taking the rice holes, grinding them, blending them with PVC resin. At that point, we make the compound. That's sort of like the pancake mix before you add the milk and eggs. 
We bring the compound over to our extruders, and okay. we actually extrude everything in a sheet form, four foot wide. Continuous extrusion, we'll usually cut them 20 feet, 16 feet long. Everything starts as a sheet good. We sand it. That's how we put the grain into it. And then we cut them into dimensional lumber, and then we run it to a wood molder. So modern mill, we become a wood mill. So yeah, we have a, a shiplap profile, right? So a locking shiplap, wow. one by six, one by 10. Reversible edge and center bead V-groove. We now have a new locking nice. V-groove. Uh, we make porch decking profiles, rabbited trim, and then we actually have mill shops and woodworkers out in the field. You can route this. And yeah. you, can, you can mill it yourself with CNC. So we have sign makers and, and um, POP display makers who actually will see and see this and digitally print on it. So. I mean, I'm not going to lie, you guys did a really good job on this. I thought that you had the rice hole in here and it's like, it like, how did they put that veneer on this? Oh, yeah, exactly. I yeah. mean, it looks like it because I mean, if, if you look, it's a, it's a nice tight grain. You guys made, simulated the wood grain, so is this just a, a belt sander? Yeah, it's a, so, it's a specially designed sander that we actually scratches the board, cuts in that grain, then smooths it out. And you're, you're exactly right. So that, that when we scratch those boards like that, we give it a grain. It's very similar to like a white oak or a mahogany, and that's what gives you that depth. So when you do stain the board, you get that nice, nice contrast yeah. between the with the, uh, the depth of the scratches and the surface of the board. But yeah, that's, there's no veneer. People often ask, ask that is it laminated or whatever yeah. it is. This is homogenous. Yep. So when we cut into this, we can sand it up. You can you can rough up the edges. You don't have to. It's not a cap stock, right? So you can Got treat it. this like a wood building material, but know that it's going to last. Like a composite. So you don't, have to, you don't have to edge band or anything like that? You can no. stay in the edges and, and all that? You don't have to prime it. You don't have to edge treat it. You don't have to seal it. It can sit in the dirt and it can sit in water. All right. I really want this. You, you, you said it looks like mahogany. Yeah. I've got a client that wants a mahogany garage door. Can, do, you, do you guys make panels for like any any like doors or any, anything else besides millwork? Yeah, we do. Absolutely. Everything starts as a four by and we do. We've, we've done some projects where we've shipped out four foot by 20 foot panels, half inch all the way up to five quarter. And at that point, yeah, you can either rip them down to size and, and you can see and see and put in profiles you can give the appearance of like a raised panel but it's wow. all in one one homogenous piece of material so i really i really didn't want to do this garage door and they're like yeah. hey we want mahogany i'm like do we have to yeah because we're in georgia the water's gonna hit it there's not yep. a lot of overhang there this yeah. this would be perfect for the that it's so. gonna shrink and it's gonna check it's gonna crack so this is we actually have a garage door manufacturer in the mid-atlantic who's using okay. acre specifically for that reason right and we have some of our early adopters, we're talking about getting cedar, right? And the cedar comes and it dries and it shrinks, and so they have issues with that. Yeah. So this is really, what's unique about this product is it is an alternative to a lot of different materials, whether they're composites or they're woods. And if you think about it, you've now got a vertical grain material that has no sap lines, no knots, right? You can get 20 foot lengths. You don't have to buy sixes, sevens, eights, wow. no mixed lengths. You can get it up to four feet wide. And it's just basically getting a slab of a vertical grain hardwood. It's not laminated. And from there, you can build kind of anything except for structural with it. Well, I've seen all the different color stains you guys put out there. So you can mimic most types of wood. So you said it looks like a mahogany because it's you can get like a clear coat on this. But I've seen you mimic cedar. I've seen you mimic some of the darker woods. Right. So that, that's pretty impressive. So people can think you have a hardwood exterior, but it's like, no, this is really just PVC and bamboo. Yeah, I'm, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, rice holes. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> PVC and rice holes. <laughs> But yeah, exactly. And I so keep on looking at this and think it looks like extruded bamboo, and I'm like, that's, or, or the, I mean, the variegated bamboo. Yeah, yeah. No, so, for sure. And yeah, I yeah. think so. Uh, it took a lot of work, and we and we spent the last um, year or so working with a couple of the stain and paint manufacturers. Uh, right now, PPG actually developed seven signature colors for us oh, using nice. infrared reflective stains. They can also match pretty much any color out there. We can actually, we've actually had customers who were who had specified wood for a project. Got it. They've stained it a certain color they want. They send it to the PPG store. PPG will max the, match the wood stain on acre in a reflective so that it meets the vinyl safe requirements and then send it back out and then yeah, people can do it. But we have seven signature stains that are great. Sherwin Williams did match six of those with vinyl safe formulations. Okay. We're the first vinyl safe formulated. Really? We're the first composite that's ever been stained. So it's I'll kind of been a that new out. territory. That is there, pretty so. cool. All right, let's talk about fasteners because, like, one of the things about some of these other one products that I work with, they're so dense that I can't like get through it with the fastener. Do you have to have a special clip system? Are you using nails? Are you using screws? Like, what are you using to attach this? Yeah, that's uh, another great question and another one of the great benefits of this. So, uh, like other competitive PVCs, we don't want to use finished nails. We need to have a robust fastener to help with attachment and restrictive movement. We've worked with Cortex to create our oh, own nice. screws and plugs. So you've got your Cortex screw. You've got your plugs, and the plugs are actually aligned in this uh, plastic strip with the grain. So 
I really like Cortex, but they usually come, come with the, the custom plugs, but you can't, you can't even tell there's a screw or nail there. Yeah, and so we worked with uh, Cortex over the last two years. They partnered with us to actually start cutting plugs out of the acre material. Oh, and uh, so we can face fasten with the with the Cortex screw, and when you talk about hardwoods and you talk about some of the other competitive materials, what's unique about Acre is that you do not need to pre-drill it. So if I take these two boards and I set the Cortex screw into the edge, automatically sets the depth. The, the Cortex, the plug cut out of Acre has nice. the grain actually aligned with it. So we can set this. Lock wow. it in, then you've got your screw and plug That's and somebody great. else set a couple in and then actually when you stand these up you can lightly sand them. What's unique about us as well is that you can actually sand acres. So these are actually lightly sanded and we wipe the stain on and you really oh, have nice. a hard time seeing those. So hidden fasteners for face fastening. Again, we don't want to use finished nails. We want to use 7D or 8D ring shank nails or screws. The Cortex screws and plugs are great. We have 50 linear foot, 250 linear, and the 750 linear foot kits available through our lumber channel. You can barely see the plugs. It's crazy. I was like, how do you attach that with yeah, one yeah. fastener, but it's, it's all up and down here. So we do have a harder surface than some of the competitive products. So when you are setting your screws and plugs, we hear a lot of builders tell us that they're actually, they don't like the screws and plugs because you can always see them. And what happens is either the plug doesn't sit right, the hole's too big, or if they, when they're hitting it, they're setting with a hammer, if the guy's not hitting it straight on, he might leave like a little smiley face yeah. or an elephant track. That does not happen with this because of a harder surface. So it's nice. a little more forgiving and, and provides uh, less issues with installer failure in the fields. Got it. And, 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 the, and the Cortex system's almost foolproof because when we're using the decking products, um, you know, goes in, and sometimes the guys like don't put it, push it in far enough. You just gotta, gotta trust that little cushion and let, yeah, yeah. let it, let it do its work. Yeah, well, drive it all the way in until it spins. As long as you do that, you set the plug right in, and then you're, you're off to finishing. All right, I just mentioned decks. So, like, do you guys have a decking product, or is that coming out soon? We do have a decking product. Um, it's a five quarter by six. Uh, we do a groove channel and a square edge. We also do a porch board, which is I think nice. a three and an eight. Okay. Um, and stain grade, yeah, we're the first stain grade composite decking material. Well, was, I mean, what I like about this is you can get that, you know, the, the, the hardwood, that the, 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 the deep exactly. dense, like Brazilian hardwood type look on your deck, the teak or whatnot, without the maintenance of exactly. it. Exactly. So when we first went to market, we would meet with uh, builders and contractors and customers and architects. There was initially some pushback saying, well, we don't think people want to stain anything, right? And we had to remind them that people do want to stain things, they just don't want to maintain them, right? Yeah. So we're, we're happy to say that finally now you have a product that can be stained but doesn't need to be maintained. So, Got it. Um, so yeah, it's an it's exciting opportunity. Uh, we've got a lot of happy people out in the field using the material and trying to find new things to build with it. And again, when we look at all the applications for this, you literally have the porch ceiling, the board and batten, the edge and center bead, the V-groove, the siding. You can make wow. them your window boxes, your outdoor shower, your shed, whatever you want to do. You make outdoor furniture, nice. outdoor cabinetry. Stain it, paint it, uh, and it's going to last forever. I love it. Actually, you said window box. I, I do have a project. We can use this on, on for window box. There boxes. you go. Hopefully yours great, comes out great better than mine. Piece. <laughs> All right, so what, what, is the best, what is the best place for people to like find a, a good retailer for this? So if you go on our website, modern-mill.com, modern we do have a where to buy page. Okay. That has a map, so all of our stocking dealers are going to show up. We are we do have coverage in every market, okay. so we sell through two-step lumber distributors, uh, and we do have stocking dealers across the country. Okay. And if you go on there, you can generally find who the suppliers are. Great. Well, I appreciate your time. Thanks. Thanks for sharing yeah, all this information. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks.